This is the third session uh, of virtual leadership sessions. I have some people I already I recognize from other sessions, but the topic for this one is how uh, to impact CX and, the, uh, and, and use the voice of the customer in these times. Um, please, yeah, let's make it interactive. Um, uh, when I returned from Australia, because I was last week in Australia and I returned early and I'm having a big thank you to KLM because they helped me out really well in, um, well, changing everything, which I think was a, a very interesting element. Um, and um, I think what I found out is that a lot of CX people uh, are still like, what should I do now and how to act? And I've also not been in a, I've been in a crisis twice when I was working at KPN, but I don't think it was huge as this, uh, but I think we need to step up. And uh, I thought, how can I help out? Because with many of you, I worked, you were in my master classes. So um, I thought this week I should have been in Australia. Let's, Put it out there and help you out to um, uh, well help you out in any way I can so for me just a little bit zoom manifesto I also found out it's good to uh, let you know you are unmuted please be welcome to share in the conversation or if you have a question you can also put it in the chat but you can unmute yourself uh, visibility of video if you want to be seen please be seen uh, if you don't, when you're in your pajamas and drinking wine, maybe not, but um, I, um, uh, I like seeing the people. The chat, um, yeah, if you can find the chat, the chat is uh, on the right side, I think. Uh, and feel free to comment, share questions. Um, we have a couple of polls. The polls that I have in here are anonymous because I think it is important that we learn the situation, but I don't, if you want to share on a personal note, put it in the chat. It's going to be maximum an hour. I don't know. Um, could be shorter. It's also part of what you are doing. And um, well, I, maybe not everybody knows me. I put myself a little bit on the right here. Um, always in this blue dress, uh, kind of a gimmick, but uh, it's also very recognizable. Who am I? Why am I here? What's the authority? I was responsible for uh, customer experience within KPN, the Dutch incumbent from 2012 to 2015, where with the team we managed to get NPS up from minus two to plus, um, plus 14. And the last five years I helped other companies on their route of customer experience. And as I shared, I had two major crises within KPN with customers. Um, and I think there's a lot to be learned, especially how to step up. And uh, that's what I'm gonna share today. Um, maybe for you this also impacted my business huge because let's be honest when you're a speaker and an educator and there's nothing i have some online trainings but still most of it is in the in the real world i also really like that much more than being behind a computer so um lots my agenda is um well much more open than it used to be so um it's impacted big like in your companies to um just to, to head it off um, what's the impact of Corona on customers and employees? And I think when I left for Australia a week and three days ago, or yeah, almost two weeks ago, we could, I don't think anybody of us could have seen the impact of this. I remember um, uh, when I left, people were like, aren't you afraid that you cannot come back? But there were just two or three people. And when I was there, a lot of my friends were like, oh, and, and what are businesses doing and um, all these kinds of elements. So, and I'm really curious. I created a little poll where I would like to um, see what, what do you think is the impact of the organization that you see? I don't know. Can you see the poll that I just put out? And feel free to fill it out. You don't have to. Um, let's see if people say that they can see. Yes, you can see the chat. Thank you. So I decided to create five. What's the impact? Nothing at all. Slightly impact, huge, monstrous, total chaos. Um, just curious what's happening. All right, yeah. I'll give you well, 10 more seconds to fill it out. Um, it's good to see what's happening and uh, I'll share, of course, with you. I'm going to end the polling and uh, show you what, uh, 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 what the results are. 
I think Zoom is also getting very busy because it's uh, taking a little bit more time to share the results. I'm sharing the results. Um, I hope you can see it. I think it's interesting. Nothing at all, nobody. Slightly, just some impact, two people, like 13%. Impactful, 19%, huge, businesses interrupted in big ways, 50%, and three people, 19% um, to total chaos here. Um, um, can somebody, would somebody like to tell what's going on? I, I don't know if somebody would like to share. Uh, Hi, Ninka. Hello. Hi, it's can you Yeah, can you share? I think it's good if you want to share, please mention your name and uh, where you work, because that's also yeah. gives us, uh, if you want to, of course. Yes. Uh, my name is Gulsun and I um, work at KVF, the Dutch Cancer Society. And um, actually it has a huge impact on our business because uh, we have a lot of events like Op de Yeah. Um, the Samenlopen. Yeah. Um, it was like uh, we were uh, getting prepared for the high season. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we have to uh, cancel all of it. It's not just um, for this month or April, but just uh, till uh, the summer. Wow. Yeah. So that's yeah. also going to really impact your income, right? So Yeah, definitely. We have actually um, uh, only the um, supporters who give us uh, monthly. Yeah. But all the other income... Um, income stromen um, yeah. Uh, are, yeah. Uh, actually also maybe the collector we don't know yet that's also huge yeah. um, so yeah, yeah it impacted uh, big you? time thank you thank you for sharing yeah it's it's all these things sometimes you don't even think about it because it's so monstrous um, uh, I think it's interesting also to see the impact on on employees right uh, I see so many different people. I see B2B, B2C in here, but I also, of course, and you're in a charity. Um, I think it is huge. And um, what we also found is that the, uh, I'm going to click this away. The impact is, is, is an interesting one. This, this, I think we never knew this was coming. Um, some of them maybe did, but it is, uh, some of you were already in the session before. I want to shortly go into this because what are the challenges that we face? And I think they're on two sides. They're on outside in, on the customer side. What is happening? What are they facing? The events are being canceled. Um, how should you communicate? I must be honest. I'm incredibly uh, wowed by the way that KLM uh, communicated. I think the honesty already before the whole crisis, um, there was a message sent out by the CEO. Also, the way that TUI communicated. It has a tone of voice, which is calming. Um, and I've seen many letters of CEOs or little clips. Uh, Salesforce, Freshworks, really interesting communication from the inside out, but also to customers. So it's also very interesting. And how do you take a role in that? Do you have a role in that or is it more public of more corporate com that's going out and i think these challenges uh, we already discussed a little bit this morning and i'm going to put the video out so if you want to see that session where you really how to step up as a leader it will be on youtube but um, i have to download everything and, and put it on so that takes a little bit but i think especially looking at listening to customers from the outside in perspective and the second pillar of the framework Many of you maybe know this framework. This is what we use within custom experience management, especially when you want to go for your CCXP. But it's also a really good framework that gives you guidance. And I think especially CX Insights, how to listen to customers might be a little bit different right now. Um, and it's interesting to see. And I've been giving it some thoughts. And, uh, well, first of all, you as a leader. This is actually what the session this morning was about. I think... If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, that's natural, but this is also the time to step up, listen, lead and engage. But that listening part, I think we need to, well, broaden it up a little bit. And I wanna, before we go into that, um, I think it's important that we dive deeper into the emotions of customers. Because let's be honest, what's happening now, and I can imagine there's two people of KLM in here, um, people are afraid that they cannot come back. That means that they're, behavior is not logical anymore and um especially when we work this is um i don't know did many of you know this already i don't know this is the emotion wheel of kluchik 
and I learned it uh, while journey mapping with Danny Pages the first time I saw it. And instead of just using happy and unhappy, it's good to dive deep, dive deeper in the emotions of customers, but also employees. And I, especially when you look at what's happening right now, is that when you look at the, the whole circle, the outside of the circle are the emotions we have that are very light. Um, but as soon as things tighten up or emotions are bigger, you turn more in into the center and have a look at terror, rage. I can imagine that terror, if you're so afraid, the the way that you're going to show it will be rage. And this is something that, how do you listen to that? And how do you, of course, react on it? But also, how do you make sure that yeah, you protect a little bit your employees? So are you, I'm really curious, maybe you can you, you share in the chat. How are you managing or managing emotions? You cannot, by the way, because people have emotions. But I'm really curious, um, do you see a different kind of emotions with your customers and employees? Maybe if you would like to share with me in the chat, yes or no, or I don't know, something that I thought of that might be really helpful for us because we are responsible for the customer. I don't know if you can go into the chat. Patricia said yes, but that was another question. Okay, I don't see any things coming in then we'll continue and we were talking about the voice of the customer and uh, I we oh, look I want was too quick sorry emotions or connectivity yes Ingrid Jonkers thank you very much uh, we have two people that are in a charity so uh, um, I think it's important and when we listen um, everybody that did masterclass with us we really loved storytelling but I think it's important when you listen to customers it's not just surveys and I want to introduce Lara Lara is a, a metaphor I used within KPN and I use it much more to make sure that you stay curious. And the, Lara is this little girl who's four years old or five, I don't know, and he just keeps asking questions, why, how, what, those kinds of things. And I would like to dive deeper in the situation now with the Lara metaphor where I said, listen, analyze, report and act. And I think things changed since last week and we need to step up these elements. Um, and Lara could be a really good metaphor. Please feel free to steal it, by the way. That's, or borrow it, just the way you want to say. I'm going to share the presentation on SlideShare if you want to use it later. But I thought it would be great to dive a little bit deeper in the listening, analyzing, reporting, and act in this situation, because I think we need a little bit more than we needed before. Um, let's see if there are some elements in the chat that are still coming in. I don't have a mic, Ilko. Yeah. A can-do mentality. I like that. Um, Lara, of course, I like acronyms. It, they work. Um, and let's start into the listening. How do you listen to your customers? Some of companies that I know have a real systemized way, but it's also often a little bit um, fragmented. A little bit is done with insights. Some people are doing the research. And now is the time to bring it together. It could be also what I've seen within uh, my time within KPN when we had a crisis. It was our time to really restructure and bring all the customer listening into one. So if that is the case, because it's uh, a little bit fragmented within the company, that could be an option for you as a leader to bring it together uh, and to have some more rooms where customer input is uh, come in. Because at the time with... Uh, uh, the KPN uh, crisis where 400,000 of our customers went to uh, France and they couldn't use their mobile because uh, we had a roaming issue. We really, it, we created a war room. And I don't know, probably you have that too, and maybe for business, but also do you have like customer listening war rooms to get those, that information in? I'm, I'm, I don't know, uh, but I think it's important that we, we have our role in that. Uh, no, good idea. Yeah. It's, um, it's something that, because it's important to make the voice of the customer visible, right? Because now, more than ever, it might be, well, stored away somewhere. So the listening, I want to give some lenses. Social media channels help, yeah. The only thing with social media channels, I think it's really good to know, but let me give a framework where you can help. And um, where to get insights? I think important right now for us is, of course, you get the voice of the customer, but I, let's keep it a little bit broader. And um, people that did the masters know this, but I want to give it a little extra attention in the Corona situation. The voice of the world, what's going on in the world. Have 
especially with communication, have a view on what other companies are doing in communication, whether it's email, whether it's videos, whether it's, so you can think and keep a broad perspective. Um, what are they doing well or not well? So you can implement. Of course, customers, we're gonna dive into deeper a little bit more, but also employees. Um, it might be a little bit more difficult, especially in the virtual world, to have a conversation with a colleague um, what, on a call center. Some call centers um, are still there, but I know, for example, from an insurance company in the Netherlands um, at Achmea, everybody's working from home. So all agents are working from home, so you cannot just walk with them. So you need to structure something on that to learn what are the biggest issues, what can you solve. Um, and especially the voice of the performance, what are processes doing? Are things well? Well, what I heard yesterday from Peter Elbers of KLM that normally you get 20,000 calls and now 200,000 a day. Well, you know this is a big pressure, right? Um, it's also interesting, and this is um, especially in the B2B. I don't know if there's many people in B2B, but the voice of value. So customers that are very important for your business from a money perspective, how do you make sure you up your listening game? I think it's very important. And also uh, in the uh, charity part, there are big contributors. I think you should have um, a different strategy, not for everybody to listen, and you, but to really have the important one, give them some extra attention. I don't know if others maybe have a strategy like that or, or send out everything to everybody. Um, but it's, it could be a good idea. So Patricia says, we we make use of the TM channel, sales, safe desk, and working at the, the lottery. Yeah, that's a, and in the B2B, it's a, um, what I really like, the, what, uh, what Ilko says, is a, a chance to make customers for, for a lifetime. And I think th these are opportunities, but still you have to do it in the right way. What I see a lot is that there's a lot of sending messages, but this is about listening, and that's something really different. Um, when I see that and I look into the Lara perspective, let's see, I think in the listening there's two lenses. And um, first of all, the, the solicited versus unsolicited, and I would like to dive into that, of course, and many of you, the solicited feedback that we get is the feedback that lands where we ask the customer. So we send surveys, uh, we have interviews, Customer arenas, I don't think there, there will be customer arenas now. So it's also interesting when you cancel those, how do you do that? The communities are actually a very interesting one uh, because if you have communities now, um, those are fabulous to test elements. Maybe it's communication or, uh, uh, but also to, to check out focus groups. I don't think they'll be there now or maybe you can do them through Zoom. I've not seen that work by the way. Um, but know that there's feedback that you get because you asked for it. The solicited part and the unsolicited part is you've not asked for it, but you're going to get it anyway. And I think especially in this time, this is, um, you could think of sending out less surveys. Do you think it's still a good idea to send out surveys? And I'm going to ask you that question. Uh, pom -pom, a poll is coming up. Um, I'm going to launch the poll. Um, what are your thoughts about sending out surveys? Do you say, well, we're going to do it in the same way we did. This is a process and we just continue. Or we altered some text and questions. Or we stopped sending out surveys. I'm really curious for your um, well, insights on that. What, what, how are you proceeding? Are you doing the same thing? Have you changed anything? Or have you stopped sending out um, I don't see votes. Do you see the, do you see the, no, you don't see it. Look, I'm going to do it again. Relaunch the poll. Okay. Let's see if it works. I hope you see it now. Thank you for being so active. Very nice. Um, don't see it. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right. No poll. Well, all right, then um, let's, I'll click this away, then it won't work probably. Zoom is busy. Uh, it's an interesting perspective for me, surveys. Uh, of course, let's be honest, the most surveys that are there are not very 
well, empathetic because they're just about getting feedback. But the thing is, I'm really curious, have you thought about of maybe changing the text a little bit or maybe not sending, um, uh, uh, yes, so, so I hear from uh, the cancer, um, there's no surveys, uh, change the questions. Our yearly survey was just done. It's very interesting to see. I think it should be a good idea to think of what surveys do we send out and how do we, how do we work on it? But this is also a moment to really scale up your unsolicited listening because that is where a lot of information is. So the calls that you have, most large companies have speech analytics. This is the moment to explore it. Text mining and, and watching the emails or maybe complaints. Um, I get some, we stopped the loyalty survey. Transactional is still like, very interesting. So brand, uh, your brand surveys are still going out. Um, and it's, it's interesting, like, is any customer filling those out right now? So, but it's, it's a thought. I think most of the companies are sending it. I see that yours don't, but also interesting and important to take charge and to think of the way that you now can listen and really understand what's going out there. So do you need to reach out? Do you need to do like, does anybody of you have, for example, done a collective Zoom, like in a focus group or a customer arena, but then in a, in a, in a virtual way? I don't know. I've not seen it, but I'm really curious. No, people say no. It is an interesting perspective to see. Not yet. Yeah. Under investigation, Brooke says yes. Oh, that's interesting, Brooke. Could you, collective Zoom is planned. I like that. I think we're getting more creative in the way that we get our feedback. And still the same rules apply, right? When you ask feedback from your customers, and especially in the Zoom way, you can record it um, and get the, the um, uh, yeah, get the feedback back to them. I wanted to add another lens because solicited versus unsolicited. I don't know. There's another lens I would like to add, and that's big data versus small data. At this moment, there is a lot of big data in your company. And I was already talking about calls and emails. You can get them through speech analytics or text mining and also social media listening. But social media listening is also that not everybody will be hurt because not everybody is on social media. And what I see is a big chance right now for small data. The one-on-one -on -one connections, especially in uh, companies where there won't be any large change projects, is maybe people can reach out to be in contact. That is a weird idea, but maybe listening to these people and giving empathy um, is an idea that would work right now. Has any of you changed the way that you listen to customers um, in the last week? Do you have other ways that you're going to use it or and you can do it in the chat but you could also please share your story through voice because i hear somebody no no stories there all right but i think it's important to see that there's a broad um there's so many ways to listen to your customers. And right now, I would say pick one extra lens that you, and one extra way that you've never done it before. Who's in there that I have not? All right, so let's get into, I'm gonna unmute you because somebody is, somebody has the, I'm gonna unmute you all because somebody has their, um, that's the listening I think the listening should be more structured we already talked about it and I think you need to up your game a little bit in contacting and reaching out and change your surveys because surveys if they were just the same I don't know and especially when the organization is completely stuck I'm gonna go one slide back when the organization is stuck with calls Maybe it's time to stop the surveys. Why? Because you're not getting back on any of it. Um, I don't know if that sounds weird. And yes, you won't have an NPS, but when the whole con contact center is t totally overwhelmed with calls and you cannot deal with it, why would you do it anyway? Very, very interesting. 
I would like to go to the, the, the A of analyze. It's, I think it's important to go from data to information. And um, what do I mean with that? When you look at speech analytics, when you look at uh, text mining, all these elements, um, I'm going to... I get some sound. I don't know if it's me. No. Um, and I think it is important to see your organization is busy, is maybe in stress, probably in stress where we saw that uh, more than 50% of the organization is hugely impacted. This is the time that you cannot just bring data to the table. You have to put information on it. So if you see um, things happening within customers when you see from your data that there's a different sentiment and you think action should be taken this is also the moment to create that information not just facts but create information so people can really um, act on it so in the analyze phase i hope in your teams you have great people that can really crush this information i'll have to oh and um, we were already talking about that a little bit. And from the information part, and you get this analyzation, what are the real problems? But also in this part, in the analyzing part, are there problems you can solve? Maybe there are issues right now when you're totally overwhelmed with calls um, that, that you could maybe, well, divert some traffic, but that sounds logical, but you cannot just get new people in. Um, you know in three weeks those calls will be away. So it's really interesting what are problems you can solve. And if you look at the analyzing part, uh, what are things you cannot? And um, also be honest on that and tell the, help the organization when you do the analyzing part that you'll say this will pass. In two or three weeks, this will be a different situation. This is something we're in. So you need to help out. And if there are things you can solve, please help. We've got some inspiration here that you could use. Um, I really like the originals part. We really need that now. But also how to win and keep customers. The Harvard Business Review uh, article I could really recommend to you um, reading right now. If you have some time, this is the moment to, well, spice up your life uh, in that regard. Um, the reporting part. We were just talking, you have listened. You've got so much information. Then you've got the analyzing part and you've got from well, facts and element you've got information you go to the reporting part and this is an interesting what customer data or customer information or oh, it's not good right now is reaching your boardrooms do you maybe need to give different information do you maybe need um, other data different a different reporting structure, different, does it need to be more often or not? Do you need more operational data? This is also an interesting, I'm really curious, is one of you changed the way that you reported into the boardroom or um, is it, are people more like in survival mode so they, this is not something that we're, we're into right now? I'm curious what you are uh, experiencing from the perspective. I'll wait a little bit in the chat. Hundred print sales are at full stop. All right, I'm doing a little interpreting Ilko, so I don't know really what that means. It means that everything is about sales. Ingrid says survival mode. Yeah, not focusing on this right now. Interesting. You have to question yourself, experience reports on the customer behavior from the open stores. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, it is important to, if you are the customer experience leader, what do you want them to see? Um, well, when things are totally out of control, keep your calm. And it's, but that was the other session that we talked about, but also report what needs to be reported. This is also when you need some action taken um, towards them, but also towards others. So, could be that you need to up your game for the boardroom. And then the act part. I think, um, especially when you still send out surveys, when you get feedback, this is the moment where you could make a difference. Um, Ilko, you already said this is a time that you can um, really build businesses. I think this is an interesting in closing the loop. If you have the chance and if you have space in your team to work on this, 
this is the moment to close loop. And I use, it's, it's actually a pretty old graph. It's four years old from Bruce Temkin, but I like it a lot. Um, the first two that you see, the reddish one, immediate response and corrective action. If you are sending out feedback forms, this is the moment to think, when are we setting up some rules? When are we acting on it? When people give us a zero or when they ask for feedback? Um, but also, this is, I think, the corrective action and immediate response, those are the fighter fighting, are much more important to be in charge of. And um, I put up a little poll because I am curious how you are dealing with this one. And let's hope that it works right now. I'm going to see. I don't know if you can see it. Are you planning to change your closed loop feedback processes? I get one person in the chat yes you can see it wow that's cool so are you planning to change your clf process yes maybe or no and this is an interesting because i think i'm, I'm curious how that if i would be working in customer experience management I, I i have my id but i'll wait for you to um seven of 21 it's also maybe a difficult question because not everybody of you is responsible for, for closed loop feedback i know maybe it's time to become but that's a different question i think um i'm gonna give it five more seconds and we'll have it a minute open um it's interesting um i'm gonna end the polling and i'm gonna share the results and i hope you can see it um it's interesting that six of you um 40 percent says we're planning to change the clf process yes 40 percent says maybe and 20 percent said no i'm curious could one of you who says we're planning to change our closed loop feedback process maybe share with us how if, if you can unmute yourself would be great if one of you could say what and how or why hi Ninke. this is Sigrid. Hey, Sigrid, hi. hi. Thank hi, you. Hi. hi. Uh, yeah, I would like to say something. Uh, we are uh, in a, a software company. Uh, and as already was indicated, all the sales uh, people are uh, inside. They are not selling. Yeah. So what we decided to do, we are a software company uh, and we provide uh, solutions for lawyers uh, and for tax consultants. So they keep on working and they keep on calling us. Uh, so we planned to do a relational NPS survey and the firefighting will be done by the salespeople. We just want to know, we didn't do a, a relational survey for a long time. Yeah. So uh, that's where, why we changed the, the firefighting and uh, to go back to the, yeah, to, to the basics and uh, ask uh, the, the salespeople to, to interact with customers that respond in order to engage better and to engage more and yeah, hopefully uh, to give a sign to the customers that we're still there for them. I like that a lot. Congratulations. What a good move. <laughs> it's, it's always these ideas are like brilliant, but it's always the execution. Are people enthusiastic about it? Yeah, I, I don't know yet. It is oh. the, it's a plan of yesterday. I, <laughs> I'm still working on it. But uh, yeah, I think it, it, they are because it, it, uh, yeah, I had a brainstorm with the sales director and, and uh, we came up with this idea. And uh, he said, yes, they, they will love it because they don't, they don't know what to do. Uh, they, yeah. they cannot sell, but maybe yeah. they can upsell like this. I, so, really, yeah. I really like the idea of yeah. putting it out there, especially in the B2B when people are inside. You could, I think, identify just because of your idea. Thank you, Sigrid, for sharing this, that You're when welcome. there are people that are not working right now or are much more inactive, see how they can help you um, either in the listening part, so be in contact, even if it's difficult, but getting empathy and listening to stories is always valuable, or in the acting part. Analyzing might be difficult and reporting also, but listening and acting. Is there somebody else who has a... Um, I, I like that. Thank you very much, Sigrid. You're welcome. <laughs> Are there other stories about the, the, the change in, in CLF or maybe no one are going to change or... Yeah. So um, can I just interject yes we actually don't we just had a, a cycle of mps so we have received all the feedback is there um, a second time who, who who's talking who, oh sorry sorry i'm sorry yes don't you see me sorry no, I don't. Um, this yes. is anna luisa and actually i've just I joined i yeah. was in a previous call um, but um 
we have done NPS already. Uh, we have some teams that are doing TNPS and yeah. we're getting feedback from them. But in general, what we're trying to do now is that anybody who's non-business critical, so any support functions, marketing, sales, account management, if they have the bandwidth and the knowledge, they can come in and help actually send in calls from customers because we're getting a lot of uh, questions, legal questions uh, from customers uh, given the business that we're in, we're B2B and we're calculating payroll for, for, yeah. for businesses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, business critical functions are the front line and they have, yeah, you know, a hundred calls for five people. It's impossible to serve them all. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's also, yeah, I like that. It's a very like the non-critical elements. It's also interesting. Um, what I see, for example, what I saw at Zappos, I visited Zappos last year, and at Zappos, before everybody starts uh, to work, they um, have to um, listen in and work in the contact center. So everybody is able to work with the software and with all everything that needs to be done. And especially what you see now in some companies where there's a huge uh, offering of calls and it's not to be done, but a lot of, there's, there's no way to scale up. This could also be the moment for you as a customer experience leader and maybe oh, and, and write that down for yourself. Like, all right, when this is over, we need a scenario uh, where we, in case of emergency, can scale up and people help in a contact center. So that could impact HR, but also really think of next steps. So see what's going wrong now. Take that and create your plan because maybe beforehand you couldn't get a sense of urgency for that because people were like, well, I work in a contact center. That's not for me. I'm IT or whatever, uh, whatever we hear sometimes. It could be that you now have leverage later on. You should not bring it to the table now, but you can build for the future because I think especially now on the acting part, we see two elements. The acting is the here and now. What we saw, I'm going to stop sharing the results. Thank you very much for sharing with me. Um, you see the here and now, and you see the firefighting uh, uh, loops. But let's be honest, the continuous improvement and strategic change is also the moment that you can look at the feedback and see what's happening in the organization and create your plans. Especially the strategy building. Um, when the stress has been out of the organization a little bit, you can come with your plans. The sense of urgency will still be felt. And I think this is a good moment to think about those things that you have actually wanted to bring to the table for a long time, that this is the moment to do that uh, after the stress has been gone and things will be turned back to normal a little bit. See some chat. Uh, we'll give the opportunity to introduce the program to deal with negative emotions, yes. So it's really, it is awful. And I think what's happening within businesses is very challenging and it will, it will disrupt us for a long time. But this is also a moment to see what are the things that are happening? What I see with customers and employees, what are challenges? What could we think of strategies to, to act upon? And um, especially about being a CX leader, the webinar we did on that this morning, I will put out because we're going much more into how do you lead? Um, but this is interesting. Do, do you have any questions about the Lara concept, about listening, analyzing, reporting, and acting? Um, if you have questions, please let me know, or if you want to add something. No, no questions seeing. Um, I thought, how impact and use the voice of the customer? I wanted to add a little bit to Lara. I think Lara could be really helpful. And also, if you frame within your company and you have to now stand up and say, we really have to listen, um, I already talked a little bit, amplify your CX leadership. This is the time to step up and to give guidance because all people in the organ, other people will not do it. You are responsible for the customer and you need to show roots. Um, the scenarios, think them through. Don't ask others what to be done because others won't know. Uh, you should actually. Um, listen with empathy. Um, you will probably get also things you won't like to hear. And um, especially when you looked at all the emotions, uh, if you listen with empathy, this is the moment to build relationship, just as Ilko uh, said. Um, be curious like Lara. I think it's very difficult when you're in stress to be curious, um, but still the curiosity of the little girl who always wanna know why and how, but really to see all these different ways of listening. And uh, I would like to challenge you to add one 
to your way and um well, I was with Marietta. We were at the house outburst and we listened with Cafe Beb, which is now not possible. We cannot interact. But that was also a different way of listening. And we're going to have to find ways in the digital virtual way right now to listen. And we need to step up our game. So if you could maybe yourself, I could challenge you to have some calls with customers, um, maybe set up Zooms like uh, Ingrid said, it would be great. Engage yourself. This is also the moment to show leadership and step up in the way you do things yourself. So reach out to employees, to customers. Get if you if it's difficult to get a voice of the customer, try to find to get a voice of the employee and uh, engage yourself. Be out there, be active, um, and the insights you get, share them. Um, chances are everybody's very busy right now. I see that a lot of people share pictures of their desks and drinking coffee with each other. Which of course. It's the newness of the situation. What if this takes a long time? You need to find a way to share information. So use the channels uh, on internal communication, create videos, uh, be there where you want to be. That's actually what I wanted to share. I wanted to challenge you and think a bit about how to listen to customers. Do you have questions that we did not talk about or things you would like to share that is very valuable for others? Please be welcome either to do it through chat or to speak up and unmute yourself. Okay. Let's see if there's something in the, oh, in the chat. No. Well, then, well, I said it take maximum of an hour. We took 45 minutes, so that's valuable enough. Um, if you want to know, if you want to reach out, reach out through LinkedIn, or um, I'm also uh, on Instagram. That's a little bit more on a personal note because, well, LinkedIn is very the business side. On Instagram, you also see a little bit more of the Ninka Bloom behind the scenes. Um, know that next week and the week after, I'll have some spare half hours um, because I think it's also time to give back. Know that if you want to talk about either voice of the customer, about being your CX leader, how to change your story, how to lead, please feel free. I've got these half hours booked tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday. I've got some in my agenda. Feel free to use these um, here to help and to see how we get through this and make sure that we be the best CX leaders that we can be. Tomorrow there will be one more um, uh, of these webinars. We're going to talk about how to lead from a virtual place. Not the thing that I know most about, but I dived a little bit deeper and also hope that you will, because it's going to be weird that we're all, most people are not in their offices. And how do you lead? Now it's just meetings. But if you have any questions, reach out. I wish you all very, very, yeah, wish you good luck. I think that's all we need. But I also need to be, be brave and uh, be a little bit bold. I see some chats. Thank you all. And uh, yeah, some of them already planned. Reach out and uh, I'll say bye for now. Have a really 